Hey everyone, I'm Joe from Marmoset, and this is Getting to Know Toolbag 3, a series of short tutorials designed to get you up to speed and highlight some of the exciting new features that we've added to Toolbag. The first episode will cover the basics of scene setup, including how to import your mesh, create materials, and set up lighting. Let's start with the interface. Above the outliner, we've added a top row of buttons to give you quick access to the most common seed items, as well as the ability to group, duplicate, and delete objects. The first thing you'll typically want to do when creating a new scene is load your object. When you load a mesh file, it'll load as a file reference object, where you can set various options like auto-reload and determine which types of objects are imported into the scene. When you click on the mesh object itself, you'll find additional controls for things like shadow casting, back face calling if you want double-sided materials, and tangent space. In the top left corner of the viewport, we've added a couple quick access buttons. Click the camera icon to jump to the properties for your currently selected camera, and click the gear icon to jump to your render properties. We've moved everything from the Render tab in Toolbag 2 to a new render object. Down below, you'll find the timeline controls and the keyframe editor for the new animation system, which I'll talk more about in a later video. The material editor has a shiny new top row of buttons as well to make it easy to add, duplicate, group, and load preset materials, and also a handy slider to set the thumbnail size. Toolbag uses a modular shader editor, which means that you can quickly and easily swap out different shader models to customize your material. I've created the diving helmet textures with the metalness workflow in mind, so I'll swap the reflectivity module from specular to metalness. Now I can drag in my maps. First the normal, and then the roughness. I'll click the invert box here because I'm using a roughness map instead of a gloss map. Then the albedo, and the metalness map. I have an ambient occlusion map that I'd like to use as well, but first I'll have to enable the occlusion model. If you're using the metalness workflow, you can save some time by loading the Unreal Engine preset and dragging that onto your model. Now let's talk lighting. By default, every scene has a skylight object, which provides ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting. If we want to customize our skylighting, we can click on the Skylight Editor to place child lights, which cast shadows. Hold Shift and drag in the viewport to rotate the skylight object. New in Toolbag 3, now you can have multiple skies in one scene. You can add another sky from the scene menu, or by duplicating your current sky. Each sky will save its own child lights, and you can quickly switch between skies to try out different lighting environments. For additional creative control, Add a dynamic light and position it in your scene to accentuate your model. I'm using an Omni light in this case, and if I adjust the light width, I'll be able to add pleasing soft shadows. We can add the new Shadow Catcher object to cast a shadow onto the backdrop. This can really help to ground the asset in the scene. When you're happy with your lighting, pop over to the Render Properties and enable features like High Resolution Shadows, Local Reflections, and Global Illumination to improve your lighting, shading, and reflections. All right, so let's make a render. First off, go to the Capture menu and hit Settings. From here, you can set various options like resolution, sampling, and file format. If you go back to the Capture menu, you can save an image to disk, copy it to the clipboard, or upload directly to ArtStation. That covers it for the basics of scene setup in Toolbag 3. Stay tuned for more episodes, and be sure to check out our website for more tutorials, art features, and other cool stuff.